I am so excited that you signed up for our summer programming. I want to make sure you have five tips before you actually start cooking at home. Tip number one, have an adult present. It is super important that you have an adult present when you're turning on your oven or your stove. That way you're not starting any accidental fires and you are doing everything properly. Always have an adult present. Tip number two, mise en place. Have everything portioned out, measured, ready to go, so when we're cooking, you're cooking along with us and you don't have to measure everything out. It is super important and it makes things a lot easier for you. Tip number three, always assume things are hot. So always have a towel or an oven mitt in your hand whenever you're touching a pan or a pot, anything that can be hot, always assume that it's hot. Tip number four, always clean as you go. Make sure you're using some kind of cleaning agent to clean your areas, especially when working with chicken, meats, or seafood. Things you can use to actually sanitize your area, lemon juice. You can also use vinegar, you can also use bleach. Make sure your area is nice and clean and sanitized. A tidy station makes things a lot easier. Tip number five, take your time. It is super important that no matter what you're doing, you are taking your time. We're not here to rush you. If for any reason you have to pause, pause, but do not rush in anything you're doing. When you rush, there is a chance of injury and we don't want that. So please take your time. And these are our five tips. I'm super excited you signed up for our summer program. I look forward to teaching you online and make sure you follow us on Instagram at Feed the Mass so we know what you're doing and you're taking pictures and you're sharing with everybody. Have a wonderful summer guys. Talk to you soon. Good afternoon, guys. I'm Chef Jamal. Welcome to the last week of our cultured cooking class, of our summer cooking program, excuse me. Today, we're going to take a wonderful journey to uh, one of the global favorites, uh, Lebanon. We'll be cooking some pita bread, some hummus, some tabbouleh, and some tzatziki. Before we get started, of course, we're going to go through all of the wonderful safety things uh, that are gonna help keep us safe. First things first, we're gonna make sure that we have some adult supervision around uh, to oversee everything that we're doing. Before we touch any of our ingredients, we're gonna wash our hands for 20 seconds. Uh, we're gonna try to use the warmest water possible. Sing that favorite song. I already washed my hands, so you guys don't get to see that action and happen. Action happen, but uh, let's make sure that we get that done before we start touching our ingredients. And then once we get past that part, we're going to prep all of our ingredients, right? So we're going to make sure that everything is kind of measured out and in their proper places. We already did that, as you can see. So we are ready to go. We're going to make sure that we have a hot pad at all times. One of these little guys, right? We're gonna assume that everything is hot because we don't know. We don't know if a stove has been left on or if something has just come out of the dishwasher and it's just like super, super hot. Whatever the case may be, we're just gonna use a safety pad, a hot pad. As we go through and we're cooking together, we are gonna ensure that we're cleaning as we go. We're gonna clean up our station. Uh, when we're done with the recipe, put things away that we don't need. Uh, cleaning as we go is going to be super, super important. It's going to help us see what we have left, understand what's going on, and have a really clear, clear mind. Most importantly, we're going to take our time and have a lot of fun today. And when we're done cooking, if you haven't consumed everything, if you haven't had a wonderful time and you ate everything at once, we're going to refrigerate uh, our leftovers uh, in a, in a two-hour window. So in two hours, if you haven't, eating it, we're going to tuck it away into the fridge so we're staying safe. We're working with some dairy today, so it's going to be super, super important. All right? So let's get started. Today, we have a wonderful guest with us that you may or may not know, but we're going to get to know over the course of the next two hours. Maya, please introduce yourself. 
Hi everyone, I'm Maya. Um, I'm the nutrition education intern, and I'm really excited to be here. Uh, let's recap. Uh, for our final week of class, we are gonna be talking about dairy. This is our final food group. We've talked about all the others. So we talked about the veggie group when we went to Spain. Uh, we talked about protein when we went to India, and then we talked about grains in West Africa. And we've also discussed fruit as a healthy source of sugar. So I'm very excited to get into our last food group, dairy. Oh yeah, we're gonna have so much fun. Thank you so much. Um, Maya knows Lebanon pretty well. Uh, what's your connection again? So my dad is actually Lebanese. Um, I spent every summer of my life there, most weekends. Um, the only home my family has is in Lebanon. So I would say I know Lebanon pretty well. <laughs> All right. So that means we have the expert in house. So this is going to be extra, extra exciting and very, very impactful. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of give you the lay of the land, right? We're going to tell you what's going on. Uh, we're going to start with our tools. Right. So the tools that we need today. Uh, so we have a couple mixing bowls. Right. That's going to we're going to put all of our stuff in there and refrigerate it. We have our cutting board, our knife. I have a couple extra spoons to kind of work through a couple of things. Uh, we have our pot that we're going to cook our bulgur in um, in an hour stove, which is our induction. Um, and then after that, we have a la plancha or a flat grill or a griddle. This over here. Um, if you don't have this, this is okay. Because what you can do is that you can use a frying pan instead. And that's gonna give us the same result for our pita. So our pita can be done in the frying pan or the la plancha. I also have a nice little rolling pin for our pita later. Um, this is gonna you know, help smooth things out a bit. If you got that joke, I hope you're laughing. Um, and then I have this cool little spatula, right? This spatula is going to be a fish spatula, but there's no fish for us today. It's, this is just going to be really, this is a really nice tool because I get to kind of go under it. See, I was kind of curved, right? I get to go under and kind of peek at things. And it's just a really, really cool tool. And I have some towels here to help clean up and such. I think we covered all of our ingredients, right? Oh, no, 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 one mistake. So a really cool tool. So for our hummus, right? Uh, some of you might have like a food processor or um, or a, or something else to kind of grind up our, our chickpeas today, but we're going to use a potato masher. We're going to try to keep the heat low, right? We went through a couple of hot weeks, so we're going to try to keep our, our, our kitchen to a nice cool temperature. So with that, all we need to do is kind of mash. This is going to be like our potato masher that we're going to use for our hummus today. It's going to be a really cool, and I'll show you guys how to use this a little bit later. All right. First things first, right? We're gonna get our pita, our pita dough uh, ready. We're gonna start working on that. Um, and it's gonna be really simple. We're gonna have our flour, our yogurt, our baking powder, and some salt. And we're gonna add that all to a bowl and we're gonna mix it up. And then we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of work and we'll work through that. And then from that point, we're just gonna let it sit. Right? So that's going to be our pita bread. Really, 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 really simple. So let's, so let's get started with that, right? Maya, while I'm working on just putting these stuff together, can you tell us some stuff, maybe some like alternatives to flour or some like really cool stuff about pita? Yeah, I'd love to. So um, I've actually never used the term pita. Uh, we call it khubaz arabi, which literal translation is Arabic bread. So if you're in Lebanon, just ask for Arabic bread. That's most likely like what everyone would be calling it. Um, there's a lot of gluten-free options. So you could use coconut flour or almond flour, or you could actually also use cornstarch. Um, it will have the same effect. All right. So today we're making Arabic bread. Um, that's really, really <laughs> exciting. Uh, so I didn't do anything crazy well, while Maya was talking, right? I don't want to get ahead of, ahead of myself. I'm so excited. I have to slow down sometimes. So in this bowl, I just put the flour in so far. I'm adding some salt, the baking powder, I want to get all of it, don't want to cheat ourselves, and then our yogurt, right? And then what's the, what's the deal about yogurt, right? Yogurt is, um, it's, a, it's our dairy for today. I feel like we, we should talk about it a little yeah, bit, Yeah, right? let's talk about dairy a little bit. So. Dairy is really important because it's where we get our calcium from and calcium is what gives our bones strength. It's what makes us strong, makes us 
able to lift things. Um, and it also has potassium. So potassium is good for blood pressure. It helps you maintain a healthy blood pressure and vitamin D and vitamin D is needed because that's the only way that the body can absorb calcium. Um, and bone development is very important. It requires a sufficient supply of nutrients um, and you can get most of them from yogurt. Okay. So yogurt's gonna, yogurt's gonna be good for us today. Just, just a little bit of yogurt, a little bit of dairy in our diet is super important. So we added all of the wonderful things, right? Right into the bowl. So what I'm gonna do now is just mix it. So like, unlike other breads, right? This Arabic bread uh, doesn't need to be kneaded a lot, right? That's another joke for you guys, keeping you guys awake, all right? It doesn't need to be kneaded as much. We just need to incorporate all of this, all of this wonderful stuff together. This Arabic bread just needs to come to a nice smooth point, a really nice smooth point, and then we're just gonna let it rest. So I'm just mixing this all together. Then I have a nice little clean workstation that we had, that we prepped earlier. And once it comes to a nice little point, we'll start, we'll start putting it together with our hands and then back into the bowl. Did we talk about, if, if, I, if I can't consume flour, what that looks like if there are some substitutes. We did. We, we talked did, about right? coconut flour, coconut flour, flour mm -hmm. cornstarch. Yeah. So remember, when you see a recipe, those are guidelines, right? Those are starting points. We can always, or we should, if we can, we can make some substitutions usually with our uh, ingredients here. So I got, I got it to a point where it's kind of flaky, right? They're starting to come together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and put this on our board and kind of just start working it together. There's some extra flour down there that I'll use in case things get too sticky. So this dough, our Arabic bread dough, uh, is going to be a little wet and that's okay. That is going to be very okay. So a really good technique to get this going, right? I got it all together here. Nothing's running away from us. We're just going to kind of press our palm into the middle of it. And then we're going to do this nice little folding technique. And then once we do that, we do that again. And we can kind of turn and just keep kind of doing that. And I'm going to keep doing that until it comes to a nice, smooth, smooth sort of consistency. And I'll show you what it looks like. And if you're having any issues, you know, just let us know in the chat. Let us know in the chat what's going on. If your dough looks a little wonky, if it, uh, if you need some help, I mean, I can't, I can't come there right now and give you a hand, but I can, we can work through it. We can work through it together, right? So I'm just doing that same technique. Picking up, turning it, pump. And you see like it's a little, it's a little sticky and that's okay. That's okay for right now. We're gonna get a little dirty here. Chef, I have a question. What's the question? Do we um, fold all kinds of dough bread or is it just specifically for Arabic bread? Okay. So here's, here's my understanding, right? So when I make bread, for the most part, any, any dough like this, I like to fold it in this manner. Off the top of my head, I don't know if there are some breads or doughs that don't need to be folded. If you know of some, I would, I would love to hear of some, or if there's maybe some doughs that, as, that, we've, that we've worked with in the past that maybe don't need as much kneading, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, if you guys so, know, let us know in the chat. Let us know, let's, let's talk about it. But your hands might be a little messy, right? Um, so you can, you can, uh, can, we, we can, they can turn on their microphones and talk to us, right? That's a thing, I think that's a thing. Yeah, so if your hands are a little, your hands are a little, you know, dirty or occupied like mine are, just turn on your mic, talk to us, see what's, let's, let us know what's going on. Okay. Look at that. That's, that's all together now, right? This is all, this is all good, good, good stuff. I think this is a really good point to kind of let it rest. You know, there's a tool. So I have this extra flour in there, right? So I'm going to put it at the bottom, a nice well floured bowl, just a little bit of flour in there, place that in. Drop that in there, put a little towel over it, and just let it rest. We have this other cool little tool. We didn't talk about it at the top, but we'll talk about it now. This little tool, this guy, um, can help us clean up some of these surfaces as we're, as we're going. Before, we were using our hands to kind of do all of this work, uh, but we can, we can use this tool 
the bench scraper, right? It comes in plastic and then it comes in a metal form. The metal form will have like a ring around the top and it's hollow um, and it, everything else looks the same. But this, this kind of dull edge, it's not super sharp, but it's dull, um, will help us kind of pick up things and move things around. We're gonna use it a couple times today. Um, no biggie if you don't have it, you still have hands that work pretty well. So that's gonna be okay. We're gonna take a quick five minute break. I'm gonna wash up my hands. Uh, we're gonna clean up our station a little bit. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna start working with the uh, taboo, right? That's gonna be, that's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a couple variations and some changes. And we're gonna talk about it. All right, guys, five minutes. We'll be right back and we'll, we'll start working on the next thing. See you soon.
All right, we're back. We cleaned up our station uh, and we are ready to rock and roll into the next thing. So the next thing that we're gonna be working on is gonna be the tabbouleh, right? So our tabbouleh calls for extra fine bulgur wheat. Sometimes we can't find all of the ingredients, right? So we, we need to improvise with what we have. For us, we found, um, let's see, it's gonna be Bob's Red Mills um, Red Bulgur. Now the difference uh, in the extra fine and then this one is that the red one needs a little bit more time to cook. So I'll show you how to cook that and that's going to require a pot um, and a little bit of cooking time, some boiling and simmering. But if you have the extra fine wheat bulgur, what I would like for you to do right now is uh, to carefully get, uh, I think it's going to be a cup of boiling water and then add that to your half a cup of extra fine bulgur, right? So the difference is gonna be cooking times and there's gonna be some texture differences and then there's gonna be uh, some taste differences. Ours is gonna be a little bit more nutty and just bigger than a, the original recipe calls for, but it's still gonna taste really, really good. The extra fine one is just small and it's used for different applications where um, it's a little bit more of a drier recipe. Okay, so first things first, right? We're going to turn on our equipment. For us over here, it's going to be uh, this induction burner. So press and hold this guy for a little bit. Power, two of these, and now it's up to 320. We hear that rocking and roll, right? And then we're going to bring over our ingredients so you guys can see what's happening. We're going to get this cooking first. Uh, for us, it's going to be about seven minutes or so, so we can get that chilled, chop up our ingredients, and then add it all together. So it's gonna be our half a cup of bulgur right in there. And we're just gonna dump it all in. And we're just gonna let that rock and roll. I'm gonna give it a nice little stir. Ours is at about 320, so that's about a medium to medium high heat. Uh, I, if you're cooking this with us, you can see this happen, right? But if you're cooking this alone, right? If you're cooking it with the extra, the, the, the smaller bulgur, just use one of these containers, use one of these containers, put the bulgur inside, heat the water up and put it in. If you don't wanna take, if you don't wanna dedicate a whole pan to boiling water, you can just throw that water into the microwave for about two to three minutes, watch it bubble, carefully take it out with our hot pad, right? And then slowly pour that in. That's why adult supervision is important when we're working with food. Okay, so we're gonna leave this here for you guys. Now we're gonna start working on the rest of the stuff to get it rocking and rolling. So we have our English cucumber, right? That's gonna be here. We have our four Roma tomatoes. And if you don't have Roma tomatoes, um, the difference is gonna be like, these guys don't have seeds. Uh, the skin is a little bit thinner, right? I think it's gonna be a little bit thinner, so it's gonna be easier to chop into those small pieces. So the seedless part of this recipe is super, super important because we don't want a lot of liquid in this dish. Then we have our lime, our wonderful mint, green onions, olive oil, and salt. So first thing we're going to start doing is we're going to start chopping up the greens. All right, we're just going to chop up our parsley here. We're just going to kind of take it off of the stem. Not a lot of it. It's going to be like a, a nice fine chop, but we can keep some of the stems, just not all of it. So the first thing I'll probably do here, right? We're gonna start working on those knife skills. We're gonna finish it up last week. So we wanna get it right, right guys? Cool, cool, cool. So all of these stems right here, we don't, we don't necessarily need those. So we're picking up our knife. We're gonna go through the same techniques. Picking up our knife, pinching at the bolster, the area where the blade and the handle meet each other. Nice, secure grip, nothing super firm. We're gonna tuck our fingers away, make sure they're clear of the blade. And then we have a nice little curl and everything's kind of just nice and firm. Then we're gonna get our, our kitty claws, our claws, right? We're gonna tuck our fingers away, hold our product, 
and kind of get that ready to go. I like to keep this side of the blade on my knuckle so when I'm not looking, I understand where my blade is at all times. All right, guys, so let's get that done. It's going to be that nice forward and back motion. Forward, let the blade do all the work, and then back. Let the blade do most of the work. We're going to need this here. This is going to be our little compost for today, right? Get, get you guys a little container so you can put your compost, and you get to decide what you want to do with it later. Use it for stock, right? You can freeze a, a bunch of the, the ends that we use here for stock, or you can... Um, you can just compost it. You can compost it for your garden or your friend's garden or your neighbor's garden or the neighborhood garden. Super, super cool. All right, so while I start rough chopping this up, is there anything that we need to know about the ingredients here, Maya? Yeah, so let's talk about tabule. Um, tabule originated in the mountains of Syria and Lebanon, and it has some amazing nutritional properties. So the first ingredient I wanna talk about today is bulgur. So bulgur is a grain food. Um, and it is very, very high in protein. So that is another meatless protein option uh, for you guys. And it also has lots of fiber. So the fiber can help reduce cholesterol levels and it can lower the risk of heart disease. Um, another ingredient I really want to talk about as well is olive oil. Are we using olive oil in this recipe, Chef? Yes, 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 yes. So olive oil is a fruit juice made from olives. It's got a seed, so it's a fruit. Um, and it was actually originally used as lamp fuel in the Mediterranean and then as medical ointment and then eventually became a part of cooking in about the fourth century. Um, and then the final ingredient I would like to talk about today is mint. Well, mm. not today for this recipe. <laughs> um, so mint contains menthol. Menthol is very helpful for decongestion. If you are feeling sick at all, you got a cold, put some mint in your tea, put some mint in your lemonade. That's a traditional Lebanese drink. Um, and it'll really help. It can also help with indigestion. So you got some stomach pains, put some mint in your food. Okay, so we, we heard about all the, thank you so much, Maya. You're welcome. We heard about all of the wonderful, wonderful properties of the ingredients for this dish, right? I'm really excited about the mint. If you have some extra mint, try that mint, try that mint lemonade, right? Okay, so I'm chopping this up, but we have to go, we have to tend to our bulgur, right? So mine started, mine started boiling up a little bit, so I turned it down just a notch, right? And it's still going. As I'm stirring, right, you don't have to, you don't have to guess if it's done yet, because at the beginning of this, this this bulgur was very tough, right? It was very hard. So as you're stirring through, you can kind of feel that it needs some more time. It's gonna need about, I don't know, four to five more minutes, and we're just gonna let that kind of rock and roll, but we're gonna, we're gonna multitask. We're gonna keep an eye on, on, our, on our bulgur while we're chopping up our, our other ingredients. Okay, so I'm gonna keep chopping, you know, hand. Hand is over, it's on top of the, it's on top of the blade, and I'm kind of just letting the blade do the work. Nothing, nothing crazy. You don't have to, you don't have to work super hard at this. You don't have to work super hard at this. Just work, work really smart. Because imagine, imagine you're in a kitchen, right? Imagine you're in a kitchen and the chef is like, I need this entire box of parsley cut up. You don't want your arm to go numb or your fingers to get tired or your, your hand to get tired. So just work a little bit smarter, guys. Just do one of these, get it all in here. If the edges need to, you know, get broken down a little bit more, these, these like really big pieces, fold them into the middle and then just continue chopping. I want to get this fine. I want to get this small. And you'll, you'll see why at the end of the dish. If you have big chunks, it'll, <laughs> it'll stand out. But for this right here, we want it, we want it to be really small. And I believe in you guys. I believe that you guys can make those really small cuts. I've seen it. They've come out really, really beautiful. All the cuts that we've done in class, all the pictures that we've seen, you know, when you guys have tagged us at Feed the Mass, right, on Instagram, or you sent it to us, those pictures have been beautiful. So let's keep that up for another week. Chopping, 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 working at the bulgur. Okay, I think we're almost there. I just wanna get a little bit smaller. Sometimes I'm particular. Oh, all right, we started, we started filling the room with aromas, this really fresh parsley smell, 
starting to take over. This, this is fine. This is fine. This is, this is a good, this is a good point. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys how to use that tool again. So remember before in class, we'd, we'd bring the board to the edge of, of the table of our workstation, and then we would cup with our hands. Let me show you something different. So you can use this little tool, and I just kind of, you know, just kind of cup it this way. Nothing crazy. And then I use that tool, kind of scrape everything. It's going gonna, it's gonna to allow me to get more products, more product into the bowl. We spent some good money on this, so let's make sure we get it all in there. Okay, so that's in the bowl. This is a good time to check back on our bowl grip. Nice little stir. Now it doesn't feel as rough. It doesn't feel as rough anymore, so it's starting to come to a good point, but I can still feel that it needs a little bit more time. There's still liquid in there. We're still looking good. Nothing's burning. A couple more minutes. In the meantime, we'll work on a smaller product that we can walk away from. So this is going to be that mint. Make sure you smell that mint. Get it going through your body. It's really, really good. We're going to pick off some of these mint leaves, and we're just going to put it once we chop it up in the same manner, once we chop this all up, we're going to add that into the bowl. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm pinching. Oh, look at that. That's, that's dirty, guys, right? So I'm going to... What's the best way to do this? So the best way to do this is to... Hmm. My, I think I need some help. The best way to take the product off of this knife right now wouldn't be to do this, right? No. no. That is very dangerous. Right? Maybe something like this. That can work. This can work. The blade's away from me, right? There's no safety hazards right here. Just kind of do one of these. Perfect. Look at that. Thank you so much, Maya. Get that in there. All right. So I'm going to stack these like this. Kind of roll them up a little bit. And then I, we want these small, right? So we're doing the same technique. We're pinching holding it softly, and then kitty claws over here, my fingers are tucked away, and then anything on the other side of this blade, right over here, is getting cut. So, nice rock motion, and I'm adjusting the kitty claw hand as I go down, trying to get my blade to touch at all times, so if I'm chopping, I understand where everything is. And then hand, you guys see that, how that transition happened, I was done. And my hand went directly over top, and now I'm doing this. One quick moment, though. I hear something happening with our bulger, so we'll, we'll transition and we'll move over here, right? Oh, and just like that, just like that, we're done. We're done with this guy. Now, if you want to double check, we can do that. You can taste it. Make sure it's nice and soft. Let's see where we're at. Great, great texture. That's exactly what we're looking for. This is dirty now. Tuck it away. That same container it came out of, I'll put that in. And then I'll just put this in the fridge. Or if you want it to cool super fast, you can put it on a tray like this. All right, watch this guys. Put it on this tray. And then spread it out. So everyone has a chance to cool down. Just like we're cooling down today with the weather, we're gonna let these guys cool down inside the fridge, inside the AC, right? This is their little AC inside the fridge. We'll get it nice and cool. Okay, this pot's dirty. And it's down here. Chef, I have a question for you. Yes. How did you develop your design skills? So I developed my knife skills uh, by going to culinary school twice and crying a lot during the days where we were cutting potatoes. So what would happen is, uh, in culinary school, they're really nice, right? But they're kind of strict. And, they, and, and just like the way we're with you guys on knife skills, we'll get a potato and we'll cut a potato for probably a month. We'll cut it down the middle, we'll make little planks, we'll cut little squares, we'll cut We'll cut them into like these beautiful arrangement of things. But at the end of the day, you knew what your knife was able to do. You knew how to like eye things, right? 
uh, so just a lot of practice. A lot of practice and repetition will get you to a really comfortable point. Everything takes repetition because at a certain point, we want it to be muscle memory. You don't have to think about it, and you can just kind of do it safely. Safety goals. Great question. So, so I made a couple mistakes. I didn't use my hot pad, right? Shame on me. So now I'm going to use my hot pad to pick this up and tuck it into the fridge. And then we'll continue chopping and putting things in here. And when this cools down, we'll mix it all together. Okay, guys, it's cool, right? So we have our cooled uh, bulgur because we prepped ahead of time, right? We want to show you guys how to make that. Really cool TV magic. We have our cool, to, our cool bulgur here um, that, has, that we cooked earlier. And I'm just gonna set that here so we can add that together. Okay, I'm gonna finish up on the mint. So, same technique. Pinching at the, right here at the bolster, tucking my fingers away. Um, nice, nice firm, but not too hard of a grip and then down onto the board, and then my hand over top. And I'm just gonna finish this nice little uh, chop to get this mint nice and small. All I can think about right now is mint lemonade. Uh, mint lemonade sounds really, really- It is very wonderful. It sounds so good. Every time I have a mint lemonade, I am transported to Lebanon. Mm. Now, is there a lot of sugar? In yes. This is a lot of a sugar. A lot of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, you know, be careful with that. Too much of any one thing is not good for you guys. We, yeah. we, we hope that we have you know, outfitted you guys with the amount of tools that you need to have a really cool balanced diet. And share this with your friends and family, right? If you know some cool things about mint, share that. Make a little mint lemonade for your friends, surprise them. Okay, I see this little guy right here. I'm gonna chop that up real quick. And now we're gonna get this all into the bowl. Using this Really cool tool again. We're gonna get this all into the bowl. Ready to rock and roll. All right, so this isn't, this isn't all coming in, so now I'm just gonna use my hand, right? Okay, there it is. Kacha. I have my little towel, just do a little wipe. My hands are away working super safe, and then my, my knife is back at the top. Okay, so next, we're gonna work on these green onions. We're just gonna stick with the green stuff for right now. Cool, cool, cool. Green onions. So the, the part that we're gonna use is gonna be everything that's green. So all of this right here, all of this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna take this part, compost it, use it for stock. We're gonna put that in that container that we have. So same thing, we're pinching. We're holding softly. We are uh, we're making sure our fingers are clear of the blade. And then we're gonna get to work. I'm using, the, I'm using the claws over here, and then we're gonna do this. Okay, I stacked up my ingredients here. My fingers are tucked away. I have it resting right here. And then I'm gonna do that nice forward. Oh man, that's, I don't even need to come back. Do you see that? Nice sharp tool to get the job done. Okay, so now we're going to cut it up super small, small as we can, and just one of these. And it's okay if the first couple aren't exactly what you need. You can reassess and then go back. And if these aren't as small as we need it, we can go back with our hand over the knife, right? Salud. Our hands over the knife, um, and then just chop it all up to the, to the size that we need. So this is what we're going to do. Ba -da 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 -da. So I'm going to slide this over with my hand. We don't want to drag our knife across here to dull our, to dull our blade. All right, we're going to use our hand to, let, to do that work. Okay, so I'm just working through here, right? And now, now the room smells like parsley, mint, and green onions. It's very refreshing. It's very uh, fragrant, and it's really, really nice. Smell-o-vision, as Emerald used to say, is something that we need, and I still think, I think we should start a petition, guys. I think we should start a petition, tell Sony and all of them, look, we want smell-o-vision and we want it now. That's it. 
Okay, so I got this on here. I'm using that technique that we talked about earlier. Gather it all together. Hand on top. The hand is going to go on top. We're just going to chop it up. Do one of these. Da 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 da. You know, I'm, I can't. I can't get mint lemonade out of my head. That's all I'm thinking about right sounds now. Sounds so refreshing. It right sounds now. so good. <laughs> There's like, I'm a little warm right now. Uh, and some mint lemonade with some friends and some good conversation, socially distant and safe, of course, you know, make sure that we're staying safe. Um, that sounds really, really yeah. good. A big part of um, Arab culture is actually eating with people. It's yeah. a massive part of our culture. Eating with people. So yeah. that's, that's great that you talked about that because um, eating with people is, is really, really, it's really important, right? Yeah. So we're, we're making all of these uh, small dips and this bread, and then when it all comes together, I, I, you know, we ha we have tapas, we have tapas in the Spanish culture, and I think there's a there's a terminology that's used here. Yeah, right? so they're called mezza, mezza, and it goes like there's up to fifty of them, and it's just like a selection of small appetizers all served together to kind of make a full meal when you put them all together, mm. and you all kind of share. So it's just kind of like finger foods, which during this time with the virus, it's maybe not the best idea, but when the world kind of goes back to normal, you should definitely take your friends out and to a Lebanese restaurant so you guys can eat mezza together. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Eating together is super important. It's super beneficial to the body and to the brain. Yeah, I mentally heard. so important to be around people. Yes. So we did that, right guys? We got, we got all of that done. Hope you guys are feeling good at home. Hope you guys are having fun with me, with us. With us as a team here, guys. We're, we're working as a team. All right, we're gonna work on our Roma tomatoes now. So, easiest way to do this, same techniques as before. We'll go through it again. We'll pinch right here where the blade and the handle meet. Slowly tuck away. Keep our, our fingers clear of, of, of the blade. And that it's nice and nice and firm, but not too not too hard. I'm not squeezing the life out of it. I'm just you know I got it. I hold. I'm holding it, nice and firm. So for this, we're gonna cut the tip off, pop, right? And we're gonna do that for all of these. Tucking my fingers away, right? Tucking my fingers away. And every once in a while, you gotta retrain yourself to hey, tuck my fingers away, because once you get that first bad cut. Can't tell you how many pieces of my fingers and hands are missing, but quite a few. You got to learn <laughs> one way or another. My brother taught me you're either gonna you're gonna either work really hard and become really strong, or you're gonna work smart and you know get smarter. So here we are working super smart, efficient, and safe. So here, so now all the tops are gone, right? All these tops are gone. So we can see that. We see the inside the beautiful kind of seedless or seed deprived kind of less seeds than others so now what we're going to do is we're going to make these little planks of sorts right so i cut the one side i'm going to fold it down and then i'm going to go through and make these little planks and then make those sticks and then cut that up so here we go that's the one that's another one and, I, and we're cutting we're cutting everything here small so we're going to try to get as small as possible ba -da -da. A nice one, another one, you know. I had a I had a culinary instructor, you know, sometimes we sometimes we think too much and he's and he would say, Hey, just cut it. Just cut just cut it, you know? Like don't don't be scared of it, just cut it. And we'll make adjustments later. So there, I just cut it. Just cut it, guys. And now, so now I made these little sticks right here. So I'm gonna try to go through and do that right over here. And you can see I kind of stacked a couple. I feel comfortable doing that. I can control this. I'm going to stack this and give it a nice little cut. Something got away from me there. That's okay. So these tomatoes are supposed to have less seeds than the other ones. And I see some seeds, but they're not big and there's not a lot like the other guys. So I'm going to make a decision here, right? And that decision is going to be to clean as I go. I don't want, I would, I would like to, I would like to not have this. I just take this out. Okay. All right, cool. Let's get back to it, right? We got those guys. We got these guys. 
and we're going to chop this up. I'm turning this product now. I'm turning it, turning it. I'm just going to, same thing. Now my claw, check this out, guys. Now my claw widens a bit. See how big my hands are? Even if you have small hands, you can still accomplish this. I'm, I'm securing everything so it's safe. I'm safe. And then I'm just cutting through. All right, with that, oof, look at this stranger. Get out of here. All right, great. <clears throat> great. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside. So I want to chop those all up at once. All right, so let's get this done. So we're chopping it up. Chef, while you're chopping, yeah. can I maybe throw out some fun facts? Oh, yeah. Talk to us. What's going on? Yeah. So um, I want to talk about language a little bit. Mm -hmm. In Lebanon, the official language is Arabic, but it is very, very, very common for you to speak three languages, which is French, Arabic, and English. So a common introduction phrase in Lebanon, almost everyone there will introduce themselves this way, will say, hi. Kifik Sava. And hi in English means hi. Kifik means how are you in Arabic. And Sava means you good in French. And any restaurant you go to, any family member you meet, that is most likely how they will introduce themselves to you. Oh man, so we got, we're working with three different languages. And they're, they're pretty, three pretty difficult languages as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can't speak French. I was in special French. They made a special class for me in school because I couldn't pass French class. <laughs> French is difficult, so give yourself, you know, a little bit of a break. It's it's tough. Oh, and English is also a tough language. I feel like sometimes we're all still, you know, trying to figure that one out. But we won't go into that <laughs> now, will we? We're just going to worry about the tomatoes at the moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that little insight on languages. And I'm still over here just chopping this up. Right? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these all a little bit smaller. I still have two more to go, but I'm gonna at least get this off my cutting board so we have some space to work. All right, ba, 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 ba. let's throw out another fun fact. Oh, yeah, what do we got? So, living in the mountains is actually a lot more common than living in the city in Lebanon, and the mountains are full of green. It actually reminds me a lot of Oregon. It's very similar with the greenery. And I think that's why I love it here. I think it's why I came here. It makes me happy. It makes me feel at home. Oh, so there's similar, what is that called? Similar landscapes, similar yeah. uh, features. Portland is very green. And I'm actually pretty surprised to know that Lebanon is green as well. Yeah, Lebanon is very green. It's actually the only uh, place in the Middle East that doesn't have a desert doesn't have a desert the only place in the Middle East that doesn't have one. Oh man yeah that's how green it is <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't know that I feel like deserts are that they're just assumed that they're everywhere right? yeah. in that part of the world guys we're, we're learning new dishes we're learning about a culture we're learning uh, so much today I know sometimes that's a little much and we're just worried about the food but it's also important to understand where our food came from and who it represents and, and, and what it does to the body. So these are really great lessons to learn, especially in the food world. Food ties into so much. Okay, so I got this one done and I'm gonna chop this up real rough, get it to a nice point that we're comfortable with. And look at that technique again, the hand is on top of the blade and my hand, the chopping hand, this one, is still doing the same thing as it was before, All right? Okay, and I'm gonna get this we're gonna get this into the bowl, into the bowl. Just wiping that off. Okay. Okay. All right, one last time with this tomato. So we're gonna take a piece off. The, the, the piece that we then, excuse me, the side that we just cut is now flat. It's not round, so we don't have to play with it. We can just set it down there, nice and secure. And then we're gonna make those cuts. We're going to make those planks. Ooh. Oh, this knife needs a little sharpening. Okay. It's all right. We'll get that right. We have these planks that we now need to make into sticks. And then we'll turn that and make these little cubies. And then from the cubies, 
we're just gonna make it all a little smaller, just a little bit. Okay, that's nice. And then we just have that one more piece to go. And then we're, and then we're done with tomatoes. Then I'll show you some, I'll show you guys some cool stuff with the, the English cucumber. Right, just like that. Just like that. Okay. So I'm just gonna take a minute here and clean up my little station, right? We're gonna clean as we go. Put all that stuff in there. Tuck that away. Okay, so my board, excuse me, my board, it's a little dirty, so I flipped it. So now we have a nice new surface area. So we have two English cucumbers. We have two English cucumbers uh, that we need to de-seed and get ready for the next step. So we're gonna do those both at once. Now we know, I don't wanna waste anything. We know <clears throat> that one cucumber is gonna be, uh, for the tabbouleh and the other one's gonna be for the tzatziki. So we can prep those both at the same times instead of going back and forth and then set it aside with the other ingredients and uh, then it's ready. So let's do that. So we're gonna de-seed, we're gonna de-seed this. And then I'm gonna show you a really quick and easy way to do that. And it's gonna be like this. I'm gonna take the tip off. And take this one off as well. We don't need it today. I'm going to cut this in half so it's a little bit more manageable. And then, so if the seeds are on the inside, right, right, they kind of gather together for us. What we're going to do is we're going to cut around it, right? That is going to require a lot less work for us, and we don't have to. Um, we don't have to make a, make, a, make a big mess out of everything. So let me show you guys how to do that. So I see, all right, I'm, so I'm, I'm doing the same technique. I'm pinching, nice little firm uh, grip here. Fingers are clear of, of the blade. And then my other hand is ready to control the product and my fingertips are tucked away. I see with the, by looking over my product that if I cut right here, I'm not so much in this, I'm not in the seeds. So I'm gonna cut this nice little plank off. Look at that, and then all the seeds kind of stay in there. Put it on the flat side, turn, and do the same thing. And a little bit more of this down here, do that. Up. Turn, do the same thing, and right down, and then just like that. And then one more for this part. So now we have the seeds intact, right? And all of this here. And now this is what we're gonna, what we're gonna use. And instead of putting it all on my board, I'll put it back right over here for us. And this is compost. Ah. Or you can use that um, to dip in your hummus later. Right, you can use yeah. this as a little snack. We can have all of these extra vegetables. If you have, if you have, uh, red peppers, if you have carrots, if you have other vegetables um, like celery uh, to go along with this dish, that'll be so good, right? So our, our mezza plate uh, is gonna, should have some vegetables on there, it's gonna have some pita on there and it's gonna have our dips, um, maybe even some like mint or something on the side too to kind of cleanse our palate in between bites. So if you have some extra, extra stuff like that, I would cut it into those planks like we did before. So I'm doing the same thing, guys. I'm doing the same thing. I'm cutting around the core in order to de-seed this cucumber. Just like that. Look at that. So I'm gonna tuck that aside for later. Those are for you, Maya, just so, just so you know. <laughs> Thank All right? you. All right, so we de-seeded these. Now these go with this recipe, so I have it in, over there. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to keep them nice and big. So it's very, very workable. Cut this in half. 
take that off the board. Let's start with the straight one, the one that, that is straight like this. I see the middle and I'll cut and just drag my knife down. There it is. Same thing. So while you're chopping, I have a question for everyone. Question. Does anyone know what the difference between a Lebanese cucumber and an English cucumber are? Ooh, the difference between a Lebanese cucumber and an English cucumber. Yeah, if anyone knows, throw some guesses in the chat. Throw some guesses. Or unmute your you mic. Think. You can also just, you know, Google it and just let us know what you find. <laughs> and if you have some questions about it, right? Because if you have questions, we Google it. Or you can stand by and the expert will give you a good answer. But I'm also curious, curious about the difference. All right, so I did something there and I didn't talk to you guys about it. See how this is kind of in this weird shape, right? That's gonna be very difficult to get to work effectively with. So what I did was I cut it at the, at the point that it makes this like joint. So now I have a flat surface and a flat surface so we can work a little bit safer. I put this part up over here and I tuck the other side and I put it with our other products for the recipe, doing the same thing. Any guesses so far in the chat? No guesses. No guesses. That's all right. You guys are busy chopping and that's okay. <laughs> so what's the answer? What's the outcome? So the answer is um, Lebanese cucumbers are actually about half the size of an English cucumber mm -hmm. and they are seedless. So you would you could skip this entire step. Oh, my land. Yeah. I wish we had some of that right now. We'd be, you might be eating at this point. <laughs> all right. So all of that is tucked over there. We have our edible pieces there. So now for this, we need to, are we grading this one or are we, great question. Sometimes we get lost and we need to refer back to the recipe. That's okay, right? So. We're chopping it. I we think. need to chop it up. All right, so. <clears throat> so we're doing the same things that we did before. We're making those planks, we're making those sticks. These are our planks. Now let's make those sticks. Right? So, fingers tucked away, nice soft grip here, or firm, but not super hard. And then we're just chopping these into small sticks so we can then go back and make cubies. Okay? So, I'm going to chop up these cucumbers, just the one, just the one cucumber, because I separated them by recipe. We're going to chop these up. And chop these up together. All right, Maya. Any more fun facts about this recipe or things we should know? I mean, I've got some fun facts, not oh, about yeah. this recipe, but about Lebanon. Yeah, let's let's keep it coming. Let's let's introduce the people to Lebanon. Yeah. So um, there's a city in Lebanon called Biblos, and that is the oldest continuously living city in the world, which I found very interesting. I didn't know that until this week. Um, I also had a couple of recommendations for some Lebanese restaurants mm. in Portland. So Nicola's restaurant is my favorite. Um, I find that they have the most authentic food. And then there is a food truck called the Pleasant Peasant. And this is, it took me four years to find this place. And they are the only place in Portland that do traditional shawarmas that I have found at least. Um, and what makes it different is that most traditional shawarmas actually have um, pickles, tomb, which is a garlic sauce, and french fries. Couldn't find that here, and the Pleasant Peasant has that. So guys, go try it. Get a proper traditional shawarma. Ooh. What was that, what was that food truck called? The Pleasant... Peasant. The Pleasant Peasant. I'll, I'll put it for you guys in the chat. Oh, yeah. Put you both of them. I am going to want to refer back to that. All right, so while we were chatting, right? So, so what we did, I'm sure you guys saw a little bit of it. We made these little sticks, right? And then from those sticks, we're making, we're making little cubies. You know, this is, all, this is all some of the stuff they kind of teach us in class, right? They teach us, I don't know if they're still teaching geometry here. In schools, the, the curriculum has changed a bit, right? But what I can say is that I remember my teacher saying, this is a stick. And then in order to break that down, you're going to make cubes into those. And those cubes are just a part of that. So if you, if you understand your shapes, you can, you can cut some really cool things. So these planks, 
turn into sticks and those sticks turn into cubes and those cubes turn into edible food that we get to eat. All right, so that's what this looks like. This is kind of the, this is kind of what we're looking for here. Now you can go smaller. I would go no bigger than this, but this is a nice, this is a nice size right here. It's gonna give us some good texture in this dish for sure. Now, sometimes it's better to cut the cucumber first and then let it sit into the bowl because then we get to understand if there's a lot of water that comes out of these cucumbers because we don't have the opportunity right now to work with the best cucumbers for this recipe, which would be the Lebanese cucumbers. Lebanese cucumbers. Yes. So the Lebanese cucumbers don't have a lot of seeds and, and water inside of it, but this one has some seeds, right, and some water. So with that said, if we cut this first, let it sit in the bowl, um, we can see if there's water that comes out and then that water, we can separate, we can separate from the dish. We can use like a paper towel to kind of like soak it up. We can tilt it and drain out some of the water, but we've done this a couple times this week. So we know that these cucumbers are exactly what we need it to be. So this one's a little big, so I'm just gonna give it a nice little rough chop. And you guys saw that, right? I transitioned my hand, my guide hand, my kitty claw over to on top. And I'm just giving it a nice little rough chop. You guys use your own discretion for what you would like uh, the sizes to be. I want it just a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna do that, okay? So there, so that's that with that. Get this together, use this method, bang. Perfect. This bowl is starting to smell really good now with the cucumbers added to the family to get to know each other. And I'm just going through and finishing off this cucumber. And then from there, we're going to start working on that lime. We're going to roll it out a little bit. Right? So the lime and the, and the olive oil <clears throat> are next. They're next up for the chopping block. Right, so here we go. So this is the lime. I'm just gonna roll it out a little bit, kind of get it activated, uh, gonna start working through it. Now the way I do that, right, you guys have probably done this a couple times, but the way I do that is I just get the lime into the palm, well, lime on the board, then I just get, I'm just working with this surface of my hand. It's gonna be just the palm, right? And I'm just gonna roll it out just a little bit. Kind of get the juices and everything kind of softened up so it's easier to squeeze. I'm just gonna squeeze this once I cut it in half. I'm just gonna squeeze this into the bowl. Now, instead of like using a strainer and all that stuff, we are just going to squeeze it into the hand and try to catch any seeds that come out. So I'm just gonna squeeze. And if any seeds come out, we catch it with our fingers. But so far we're good, no seeds. This is great. All right, so for this one, we're gonna use, for this one, we're gonna use the whole line. This one's still a little rough. We could have, could have softened it up a bit more, but that's all right. All right, that's in there, right? Clean that up a bit. All right, so now we're looking at three to four tablespoons of our olive oil, and we'll just go, so remember we're in class when we were doing around is one, right? So tablespoons, we're gonna go three to four. One tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons. I'm now saying I would like an extra one, and four tablespoons. Don't do it super slow, don't do it super fast. A nice, consistent motion will get us to a good point. Okay? All right, so let's talk about pinches of salt. All right, there were some, there were some uh, things that happened a couple weeks ago with the white fish and the salt. We kind of oversalted. So I'll, I'll tell you this, my fingers are a little bit bigger, right? So my fingers are big, so my pinch to your pinch are gonna be different. Grandma's pinch to my pinch are gonna be a little bit different, right? She has a little bit more character, so maybe it's a little bit different. So for my pinch, it's just gonna be just a small little, small little thing like that. Just a small little, small little thing like that. So. I'm just going to do one healthy pinch. I'm looking at it and I'm judging. 
Okay, let's do two. Two healthy pinches. Okay, that's it. That's it for the salt. Take off all those granules. And now we're going to mix it all together. And by all of it, I mean all of it. So don't forget, this will be a good time to check on the bulgur. All right, the bulgur should be in the fridge. It kind of chilled out. Ours is already chilled. We made it ahead of time, but we also have some extra in the fridge. Dump that in there. Break it up a bit. It should come out to a little, a little block like this, right? And we're just going to break it up a bit before we mix it all together. Do this. And then, then tell everyone to get to know each other. Hey, Cucumber, have you talked to Parsley today? No, but I talked to Mint. Let me go talk to the other guy. All right. Hey, Bulger, what's going on? I see you just showed up. Did you, did you sign in? Yes. You know, the food needs to get to know each other. They need to, they need to hang out. And they're going to hang out a little bit more in the fridge. We're going to have this all chilled, ready to rock and roll in the fridge. But I want to incorporate this pretty well first. So I'm breaking up the bulgur, there's still little clumps, mixing it all together. Mix, mix, mix. Oh, I'm telling you, this smells really good and it looks so beautiful, so right? So colorful. So colorful. These dishes, right, are indications of so many health benefits. When we're looking at these cucumbers, we're looking at these tomatoes, we're looking at the parsley and mint. Not only is this dish good for you, like, Taste-wise, it's also good for you internally with all the nutrients that are going to enter your body. You're going to have so much energy after this meal. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oop, lost the guy. Or gal. Lost some friends. There we go. I'm going to leave the spoon in because we're going to need that for serving later. So I'm going to leave that in there, and I'm going to toss it into the fridge. This is a really good opportunity for us to take a break, clean up our station, and then we're going to start working on the next thing. The next thing that we're gonna work on is gonna be the tzatziki. So I didn't tell you this before, right? But it's super important that if we're working with a dairy product or something that needs to be refrigerated, it needs to stay refrigerated until we're ready for it. So there's no yogurt on our board right now because it's in the fridge. When you come back, you'll see yogurt out here with us ready to get the job done. Then when we're done with it, we're gonna put it back into the fridge. All right, so let's take two minutes Clean up our station, wash our hands, do what we got to do. I'm going to take away anything that we don't need anymore. Uh, and we'll see you right back here.
All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, so we cleaned up our station, right? So it looks a little bit different. I uh, hope you guys did the same. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the ingredients that we're going to be working with for the tzatziki, right? So we already prepped our cucumbers, right? So next thing that we're going to have is our yogurt. So let me pull that, pull that out of the fridge for us. <clears throat> yeah. Our yogurt. A lot of goodies in there, so you got to look for it. All right, so we have our yogurt. We have our cucumbers. We have our lemon. We have our, excuse me, we have our oregano, which is dry for, is dry for us. We have dry oregano, which is a no, right? So if you don't have the fresh herb, but you have it in a dry form, the dry form is going to be more pungent, right? So if you need, um, I think it's going to be a teaspoon to a tablespoon, right? So if you need a tablespoon of something fresh, you just need a teaspoon of it dry to have the same effect. Now that all changes if you have oregano sitting in your house for, I don't know, last three years, because that's the last time grandma gave it to you, or that was the last time you bought it, that's going to change. So we need to make sure that our ingredients are still fresh. Even though it's dry, it still needs to be not out of date. So we have a teaspoon of dry, our mint, and then uh, some salt here in our bowl. Okay, so let's get this done. So the first thing we're going to do Let's get the yogurt into the bowl. The yogurt's gonna go in. If it doesn't wanna come out, we'll help it out. Oh, nice, it worked. So that's there. Then we're gonna put the oregano in. Perfect. We're gonna start with our mint. All right, I'm gonna start pulling some of these off, smelling it again, smells really good. Don't want this one. Da -da 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 -da. Picking through this mint, so we, and then we're just going to, that's a lot, but that's okay. Now we're gonna kinda of pile it up on top of each other and then roll it out. Roll it up a little bit. All right, so we're gonna go back to those knife skills a couple more times. We're pinching at the point where the blade and the handle meets, tucking our fingers away from the blade, nice firm grip, not super strong. Getting it down, now we have our kitty claws and I have my fingers tucked away. And then anything on the other side gets cut. So we're gonna go that back and forth sort of motion. I'm trying to cut this nice and small, right? While you chop that, I have a really quick, fun fact about tzatziki. Oh, yeah. Let's talk um, about tzatziki. So tzatziki actually originated with the Ottoman Empire. So it's been here for a while. So that's like about the 14th century. 14th century. Yeah. Well, the Ottoman Empire is between the 14th and 20th century. So I don't know exactly when they created the meal, mm -hmm. but it's been around for a very long time. That's a really long time. For a recipe to be along, uh, around for that amount of time, that means it has to be tried, tested, and good. Yeah. So we're using, this is, this is great. We got a little bit of history here in this dish alone. So you guys see that I cut, excuse me. Thank you, Maya, for that wonderful knowledge. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so we see that we cut these guys up really small. We're going back to the hand over the top and the back of the knife technique and just chopping that up. But I cut it up so small already on those first cuts that I don't need to do a lot of work here. So once again, doing that, gathering it together and then adding it right here. Da -da -da. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna roll out our, our, um, our wonderful lemon. So what exactly does rolling it out do? So it kind of softens it. Um, so the outside, so we know that the outside is full of all of those wonderful smells, right? We start doing that. We kind of, kind of just activate it and we soften it up. Because when we go to squeeze it, right, we don't want something that's super firm. We want something that's going to be a little bit softer on the touch since we're squeezing it with our hands. If we were using like a, a press of some sorts, then it doesn't really matter as much. But since we're using our hands for a lot of stuff, we want to just kind of give ourselves, cut ourselves a little slack. You know, 
So same thing, guys, right? Pinching, tucking away, not super firm, not super hard. Claws holding the product, fingertips tucked away, and then a nice, easy front to back motion. All right, I see some CDs in there, so we're gonna go with the technique of catching this into the hands. And already, that's like seven seeds in there, in my hands. I think I caught them all, might have lost two or three. So we'll pick those out. But for the most part, we're getting it. Now the recipe calls for about, I think it's about three to four tablespoons. No, nope, excuse me, it calls for about a, a whole lemon. These lemons are big, right? And there's so much, so, so much of it that we're just gonna cut this one in half. But if you wanna use a whole one, go for it. Let us know how it, let us know how it works out. But for us, we're just gonna use the halvesies, right? I want all of this. There we go. Then you can see I have seeds. I have now caught those seeds that are there. Now there are one or two down here, but I'll pick these out. My fingers are clean so I can do this, right? So we just put that into the compost. And we're just gonna give this a nice little mix. We're not done with it yet, but we're just gonna give it a nice little mix. And this smell of the lemon, the mint, the yogurt, and the oregano is super, super good already. All right, that's there. All right, now it's time for the fun part. So, I'm not sure if we talked about a box grater or a grater of source, but if you need a moment, I'll give you 30 seconds while I talk about it for a second. <clears throat> so we are gonna use our box grater for our cucumbers to kind of get that nice, uh, texture and consistency in there. If we were to cut these by hand, we'd probably be here for a while, right? So the most effective way to get this done is to kind of grate it. And that's why we kept these in big pieces. So it's a lot more manageable. All right. And the side that we're going to use today is going to be this one. In the past, we've used uh, like this side and this side when we were using the ginger and the garlic. This time we're going to use this. Now note this. Right? Just because we're not using a knife doesn't mean that this object is not sharp anymore. So we need to be very, very careful um, in order to figure out, we need to be very, very careful to make sure that our fingers don't get caught in here. All right, so let's go through this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it over top of the, of, of the uh, bowl that I want to get it in. So here we go. Not sure what that is, but we don't, we don't want it right now. So I'm kind of doing one of these. Everything's kind of tucked away and safe. And we're just gonna go through that. This is a really good way to kind of cut up veggies for a salad. So imagine if you have like a, a carrot, apple, walnut, sesame salad of sorts, right? That you're making, sounds very fallish, right? We're coming into fall. If you're doing that, instead of chopping up your carrots, super small, try this out. Try this technique. I'm doing the same thing. Tucking my fingers away, I'm looking at what's going on, understanding that this, that this grater is very sharp so I don't wanna get cut, and just working through that. And then when I get to the nubbies, aka snacks for later, I'll just set those aside. If you want, you can take those nubbies, put those on your cutting board, and chop those up. Right? You can chop it up really small and just add it to this dish right here. So while you grate that, let's talk a little bit more about dairy and tzatziki in general. Yeah. Um, so we talked about calcium and how you need that for your bones. Um, but our bones actually keep developing as we grow. So it's not one intake of calcium. You need it throughout your life. And at about age 25 to 28, um, your bones have achieved a lifetime density, but you still must get the right amount of nutrients to maintain that healthy level. So what happens if you don't get enough calcium? Um, well, there's a possibility of bone disease or osteoporosis, and that can cause bones to become weak and brittle. It doesn't sound very fun. Um, so make sure you get your calcium. The recommended amount would be about a cup of milk or yogurt um, or about one and a half ounces of cheese. And that can count as one cup from the dairy group. 
Um, and it's recommended by my plate to have about two to three cups of dairy a day, uh, depending on your age range. So you should go to my plate and check out um, for your specific age group how much you should be having. But we also have some dairy-free alternatives to this. Uh, for those of you who don't want any dairy, you can get calcium from a lot of other things like tahini, uh, garbanzo beans, which we are using in our hummus later, um, cooked broccoli, edamame, papaya. There are a lot of other options for you out there. Mm. Yeah, so thank you so much. So there's, <clears throat> so we're talking more about the nutrients uh, side of all of this, and it's very, very important to be mindful of what we're putting into our body, right? So we wanna, we're trying to achieve complete, complete plates, right? Of, of well-rounded nutrients for our body. So remember, it could be a papaya, it could be um, something that's not exactly here right now with us, but you know, make sure that our plates have all of the nutrients that we need. That, so for us, it's going to be this yogurt. It's going to be this yogurt for, for us today uh, for our calcium intake. And we also have some, I think we also have some protein that we're going to be using today, right, as well? Some extra, some other proteins. Yeah, the, the beans. The beans, the yeah. chickpeas. Yeah, so we are, we are trying our best to make sure that we have complete, mm -hmm. complete plates. Yeah, and also the bulgur has very, very high protein. Oh, it's that's a high right. protein meal. That's right. It is a high protein meal. That's why it's best if it's shared, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're breaking it up with some veggies as well. All right, guys. So I'm, we're done with the cucumbers there, right? And I cleaned off the front very carefully. I only went up and I took that out. And then I checked the inside to see if there's any goodies in there. And I think we got them all. So that's done. We're done with that. We're done with that. We're done with that. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'm just going to mix this all up carefully. And I hope, I hope you can see this. I hope you can, I hope you're smelling what I'm smelling. It looks really good and very refreshing. It's nice. This is really nice. Okay. No questions so far in the chat. Everyone's doing what they're doing, right? They're cooking. All right, this is done. Right after we add a little bit of salt, this will be done. So once again, I'm gonna do two. This one's gonna be one pinch, one, one Jamal pinch. So here we go. Uh, so that's that. Remember, guys, those are my fingers. My fingers might be a little bit bigger, or yours might be bigger too. Who knows? But we're going to do that. But the best way to know we have an opportunity here, we can taste this. Okay. Tons of lemon, nice and tart but also very refreshing. Fantastic. Okay, into the fridge we go to rest up, to get to know each other. I already hear the cucumber talking to the yogurt. It's wonderful. They're getting to know each other. It's fantastic. I think we're done cutting. I think we're done cutting. So let's tuck the board away, right? We're gonna clean our station as we go. Tuck the board and the knife away. Best way to do that is take the board down first, right? And then carefully take the knife. That's my sink down there, guys. So just so you know, if you're curious, what's he doing down there? What's happening? That's our sink, okay? All right, cool. Cleaning up the station, getting ready for the next thing. So the next thing is going to be the hummus. All right, so we have our chickpeas, our lemon, our garlic, right? And then our tahini. So tahini, what is it? What's tahini, Jamal? Tell me what tahini is. Chef, what's tahini? So tahini is gonna be grounded up sesame seeds, right, with a little bit of oil. Um, it has this like really nice, rich, uh, sort of nutty flavor. And sometimes when it's in the container and we have it in our, uh, our pantry, it's separate. So the oil will get on top and then the actual grounded up uh, sesame seeds are gonna be in the bottom. 
give that a nice little mix. Mix it up before we put it into our container while we're doing our mise en place. So we have a nice little a mixture of both. This right here, right? This is well incorporated. It's not separated and it's good to go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back from what I said. I'm gonna cut up the garlic really small, right? Since we're not using a food processor, I'm gonna cut up the garlic really small. Let's do that. Clean the board off a bit. Now, if you have a food processor, you could essentially take all of this, throw it in your food processor. You can take the chickpeas, put that in the food processor. Uh, you can take the little bit of uh, chickpea water and you can take the tahini. And you can just kind of add it all to the, to the food processor and just let it go, right? But for us today, we're gonna use a more manual application we're gonna use this guy. So we're gonna use our, this is a potato masher, right? Everyone, I feel like everyone used to, or still does have a version of this. And we're just going to put the chickpeas in there and kind of work it till it's a nice, a nice consistency. We aren't over here, we're not going for super smooth, uh, but we're going for flavor. If you want something super smooth, then use that immersion blender or the food processor or just a blender. All of that will help you achieve the goal of smoothness that you're looking for. So now this, let's go through the garlic, right? One last time, this is the, this is the last, this might be the last time we, we cut something, guys. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do, right? We're pinching and then we're tucking our fingers away and then we're just getting our claws ready to go. Everything's clear of the blade. My fingers aren't there. We're just gonna go down and then this is gonna be rough. This is, we want the garlic sort of flavor and we're just chopping, we're just chopping, right? Nice, simple cuts, we're just chopping, we're just chopping. And we're just gonna do the same thing. I'm just pulling another piece over to do the same thing. Cause then we'll just, I'm cutting all of this, all of this, this is all good. Chopping this up and then watch the transition guys. It's gonna be smooth, smooth like, smooth like James Bond. Maybe I had a second life and you guys didn't know it. And I'm telling you right now. Watch this smooth, smooth, smooth. Watch this. Bang. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's it. We're just going to break this down a little bit and then add it to the bowl. We're going to put the garlic and the chickpeas in the bowl and kind of mash those up together. Just so you guys know what's happening next. If you're working faster than me, that's okay. I want to keep, I want to keep you informed every step of the way. All right, cool. That's good for me. That's good for us. So I'm going to take this right into the bowl, right? I'm going to take this right into the bowl. I'm using my hands there or look at that. Three motions and we're done. We'll keep it here just in case. All right. Chickpeas, oh. All right, the fun part, right? Let's work it out, work it out just a little bit. Okay, and we're just gonna press down. We're just gonna press down on chickpeas. While you're doing that, let's, let's talk about hummus. Let's talk about hummus. Yeah, so um, it's pronounced hummus in Arabic, but a lot of people say hummus, even in the Middle East, people refer to it as hummus a lot. Um, it's, the meal itself is really low in saturated fat and very high in fiber and protein. And a lot of the protein obviously comes from the beans and the tahini actually, because tahini contains more protein than milk and most nuts. Um, so very high in protein. And garbanzo beans, like I've said, are a great source of calcium. Mm. So we've got some more calcium in this if you are dairy free. So there's calcium, there's protein, there's a lot of goodies just yeah. right here in this small little dish with garlic, garbanzo beans or chickpeas, uh, tahini, lemon. Yeah. I mean, guys. And I having hummus is like one of the easiest ways to get the recommended 1.5 cups of legumes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because it's all just in there. It's all smushed. So you're saying at least once a month you should make some hummus, right? Yes. And just kind of stick it into the fridge. Maybe make, make a bunch of it, right? Yeah, it lasts. Yeah, it lasts for a while because yeah. there's nothing there's nothing that can really go bad, here, no. right? You stick it in the fridge and it's okay. 
Now, for us, we're making this variation of hummus, right? Uh, you can, if you so choose, right, you can add roasted bell peppers, more garlic, more lemon, um, hot sauce, all of those things to, to kind of like please your palate or to, to accompany whatever dish that, you're, that you need it to work for. But traditionally, right? We can say that right, Maya. Traditionally, this is how it's this is how it's done. So, while you guys were absorbing all the wonderful food facts, right? I was over here working, working out this, working out this chickpeas. Now, I want to get to a texture that's just kind of sort of smooth. And by kind of sort of smooth, I mean it's not super grainy. It's not super grainy when we taste it. So by grainy, I mean like it doesn't feel like salt or black pepper or something. You know how that can be kind of granulated on the tongue or in the mouth? We want to try to eliminate that. Now, we have these two. We have a little bit of the chickpea water that I'm going to add. Cool, cool, cool. And I'm just going to, that's going to help me break this down a little bit, incorporate all of this. Now, there's a lot of garlic smells in here. And that's wonderful. We should be smelling as we go. So that's going to be a really good indicator of what the end product is going to be like, at least for this dish. That changes, but it's good to know the smells. That's part of building the palate. But I won't bore you guys with that. Okay, so that's good. So now, lemon juice. So we had half of the lemon from earlier in the week, so we're not going to waste it. Uh, we squeeze a little bit out, but we're going to add some of this lemon in there. Same technique, right? Catching the seeds, squeezing it up. And it was already rolled out, so it's kind of soft for us. It's really soft for us. So I'm trying to get the liquid, but not the seeds. And get, get as much as we can. Okay. So that's that, right? And the seeds, not compost. Fantastic. So now I'm gonna give it a nice little whiff. See if that's it's very lemony and garlicky. Garlic yeah, I can smell so, it all the way from over here. You that smell that? Great. Right. Um, I don't want to add more lemon right now because I don't want I don't want this to be too lemony. Now, the next thing we need to do is mix in. The grounded sesame paste, right? The tahini. Okay. Now, let's mix this all up. That's our dough. Oh, dough. Okay. This is nice. Get everything from the bottom, incorporated, and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna taste it, right? The spoon is now trash once I put it in my mouth. It needs more lemon, it needs a little bit of salt, and we're gonna adjust that. That's why we taste, that's why we taste while we go. Good thing the cutting board's here. Whoops. So, take this off, roll our lemon out, and add some more lemon juice. Okay, let's make that work, and then we're gonna grab that salt too. Salt ran away from me. Hmm. All right, I'm I think shortly. it's on your little plate thing, the tray. The tray? Am I wrong? Oh, I think I'm wrong. Hmm. All right. We'll find some salt here shortly. I'm sure it's right behind me with our spices. Oh, I think it's next to the chickpea um, oh. bowl oh. on the opposite side. Oh, all right, all right. We'll find that here in a minute. I'm gonna squeeze some more lemon in here, all right? I don't see any seeds, I think we're clear. This one's tough. All right, oh, here it is. <laughs> you guys didn't say anything back there? <laughs> Get 
that in there. I'm gonna clear my hands, get it ready for the pinch. All right. I'm gonna do one, two, three, three, three Jamal pinches. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Now let's incorporate this all together again. See, see what we come out with. Oh, that smells and looks. If I can tell you it got better, it got better, guys. Okay. Excuse me. Great. That's good. That's good. That's so good. Okay. Into the fridge we go. Those are our dips. All right, guys. I think we're ready for the last part. We're ready for the last step, and that's going to be the pita bread. Uh, before we dive into that, let's take another five-minute break, right? We're going to clear up our station. Um, we're going to get our, our surfaces ready. So that's going to be a little bit of extra flour uh, with a nice clear area. Whatever we're, we're cooking our pita on, a little roller, and our dough. So take a little five minute break and we'll see you here in uh, five minutes.
All right, and we're back. So we washed our hands, we cleared our station up, and now we're just working with our pita, right? Uh, we are working with our Arabic bread now. So the first thing that we need to do, right, is going to be whatever cooking surface, whatever we're using to cook the Arabic bread, it needs to be preheated. So for me, this La Plancha um, goes up to 400 degrees and I want it super hot. For you at home, it's gonna be a little bit different, right? So you're probably using just a frying pan. So put that pan on, the, on, the, on our stove to a medium heat, right? You want to be able to control what's happening. Once we get a little bit closer, then, then you're going to turn it up to, to medium high. For us, this is going to be hot always. What we're going to try to do is separate our dough into six individual pieces, flour our area, roll those out, work with the flour, set it aside for a minute if we can, and then put it on and we're done. All right, so let's get this going. I have a little extra flour here on the side. If you don't have that, you can grab that right now. It's gonna be very useful to, to, to work with. So I'm just gonna do a little, little one of these and a little bit more one of these and just get that going, right? Dough, still a little wet, that's great, out. And I'll show you guys, right? Check this out. So we know that we want six pieces out of this so let's do let's let's do this right so cut this in half see this tool that we're using how it has another use right that's two now if i need three and three we're just gonna go one two and these might be a little big and that's all right we'll figure it out three those are three pieces we're making some big big Arabic bread here today, guys. And that's all right. All right, these are our six pieces. Okay, so let's put everything we're not working with up here and then the other part. So, so what, let's troubleshoot some things that may or may not happen, right? The dough's a little wet and there's some flour here. If we get some sticky parts, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the flour, apply it to that sticky part, try and then work through that. Maybe remove, some of the dough, and then do it again. I'll just show you what I mean. So first things first, get this into a nice ball with a little bit of dough. See, I dipped it over here, a little bit of dough. And I worked it into a circle, right? Look how soft that looks, guys. That looks so good. And now I'm going to pinch, pinch. This is pinch, my right hand's pinch, and my left hand's pull. They're gonna be the detectives working, helping us work through this situation right here. All right, so pinch and pull, pinch and pull, pinch and pull. Now we don't want to tear it, so I almost did it there because I got really excited. Pinch and pull. And this is going to start working out the dough a little bit, kind of keeping its shape, right? Now I feel the stickiness, so a little bit of dough, a little, excuse me, a little bit of flour, a little bit of flour, then it's down, and I don't want to roll this out too much. I want, the, I want the sides of it to be thin, but I don't want to break it. So there, ah, look at that. So now we see the sticking, a little bit of flour, pull it up, work through that, and then there. See, that flour really, really helped us there. So now I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna do the same thing. Pull it back, right, a little stickiness, but that's, that's okay. And then just try to keep that circular, a circular shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to keep it a nice, thin consistency. So we're gonna try to get this one, we're gonna try something. We're gonna try to get this one kind of thin, but not too thin, because we want nice, fluffy kind of pieces, right? Just be careful, because we might rip it along the way. Look at that. Look at that, okay. And then once we get it to a nice place, right? This is nice, right? Look at that. The sides of it are kind of thin there, not super thick. We're just gonna let it rest. We're gonna do like one or two more, 
Then we're gonna put like three or four on at a time, right? All right, let's go through it again. A little flour on the surface. Dip that in there, feels a little dry. Excuse me, feels a little wet. We're gonna roll this into a ball. And we're just gonna keep working through this. I'm gonna do a couple of these. I think Maya might have some, uh, some words for us. Yeah, so I've got a couple of fun facts about Lebanon. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but it actually snows a lot in Lebanon. Well, not a lot, but more than any of the other places in the Middle East. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, it's about 12 inches of snow per year, which is not a lot for people who live in like Canada, but for someone who's from a desert, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot of snow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Lebanon is actually the second smallest country in the Middle East, right next to Bahrain. I didn't know this. I didn't know that either. So what's the first smallest country? Bahrain. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, do you know how many people uh, live in Lebanon, per chance? Like, since it's so small, right? Um, um, yeah, so right now the population in 2019 was 6.8 million. That's a lot of people yeah. in a small country. A lot of people. All right, guys, we learned a little bit more today, right? We learned about population, we learned about nutrition, we learned a little bit about how to work with these food items. Oh, ooh, got a little hole there, all right? This is what we're gonna do. Pinch it together, patch it up. Maybe work through that little dough spot right there. Just see what we can do here. Let's give a nice little roll. What hole? What hole? All right. <laughs> We'll let this one sit, carefully peel it up. I'm just gonna let this one sit too. Now we're gonna put the first one on because it's been a little bit of time and we don't need any oil or anything here, right? We just need a dry pan that's nice and warm, a little bit more than warm. Uh, we just want to be able to cook the inside and the outside, get some nice browning on one side, and then flip it. If we did it right, if we did it right, and the conditions are perfect, we'll get a nice little air pocket on the inside, and that's gonna attribute to the, a wonderful end product. All right, so another piece, a little bit of flour, right? Got this in here, roll it up into a ball, and then pass it over to the two detectives, and then just do this. Pinching. Pull, pinching, pull. That's gonna be, this one's gonna be good. I feel this one, guys. Okay. So we're gonna do a little multitasking, right? We're gonna keep working through some of this dough while we're cooking some of this wonderful Arabic bread. Okay, so I got that into a nice little shape once again. So when I do that, right, when I do this, what I'm doing is taking off any dough that might stick and cause us some sticking issues. Now I have a clean sort of clean sort of situation there. Look at that. So, so it's not sticking, right? I just want to I just want to flatten it. I don't want to roll it too much. So let's put it on the other side. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. Ooh, I went a little crazy on that one. I'm sorry about that, guys. Yeeks. All right, take that off and then keep going. Just a little bit. This one's good, felt it. All right, a little sticking, that's okay. I just wanna try one more time, guys, one more time. Okay, look at that size, look at how thin it is. We can kind of see through it a little bit. We can kind of see through it just a little bit. That's all right, that's good. Now, oh my goodness, guys, I tell you we worked really hard all week for this and this is the moment. Look at this, look at this bubble that's in there. This is, a, this is a sign of success, right? We did it. So we're gonna check the other side. Woo. That looks beautiful. Woo. Hi. We do not need to spray the pan. We don't need any oil uh, inside of it. Um, once again, it just needs to be dry, nice and hot at this point, and we'll be good to go. So we had our other one sit for a while. Let's throw that on. Hot. 
All right, cool. Got another piece, a little bit of flour on our surface. Oh, this one feels good too, guys. All right, cool. Pass it on to the detectives <clears throat> and work it out. Work the Arabic bread out. Okay, that one's good. There it is. And now a little roll. Let me check. Let me check our equipment here. Blah, blah, blah. All right, great. Nice little roll. All right. See some stickiness already. So I'm gonna slowly pull that up. Oh, that's a lot of stickiness. Okay. So let's get the other side flour. And let's try it again on the other side. Okay. Ho ho. Okay. Get that going, taking off these dough spots, throwing on some flour. Just a couple minutes on each side for the pita once it's in the pan is what we're looking for. Doesn't have to be super long. So that first piece that I put in is probably ready to come out uh, and sitting in a nice warm place, right? So for us, it's gonna be this container right here. Excuse my hands, but we're working guys. Look at that. That's great. I like that. So in it goes. Cover it up. Stay warm. Tuck this guy over here. Take this guy. Sat for a couple minutes. Drop. Cool. We have some more air bubbles. We're doing the right things. We're paying attention. And we're finishing up over here. Okay. I've got a fun fact coming your way. Talk to us. So um, the national emblem of the country is a cedar tree. We've got a lot of cedar trees here in Portland. Um, and it's actually on the flag. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Lebanese flag, but it is two red parallel lines with a cedar tree in the middle. I was very excited. Um, I go to the University of Portland and we have a huge cedar tree on campus. So it was actually one of the reasons why I chose UP over okay. other schools wow. <laughs> in Portland because of their cedar trees. Cedar trees. <laughs> Makes me feel at home. Aww. So I feel like you're getting a lot of like a lot of feels from home when yeah, it comes no. to Portland. That's nice. It's very important. We need to feel comfortable in our spaces, right? Okay, I'm working through this one, but I'm going to put it down for a second because I feel as though, right? And if your hands ever get this gunky, what you can do is kind of rub it off or take a little bit of flour in your hands and kind of rub it off that way. Okay. So I see some air pockets. I'm gonna check the other side. What do we got? Oh, look at that, guys. Bang, and it's fluffing up. Oh, my lanta. <laughs> oh, my lanta. This is it. This is, this is what it's all about. Okay. All right, back to the dough. Back to the dough, back over here. All right, cool, cool, cool. Floured. I'm gonna make sure I don't have all of the stickiness on there. Give me a fighting chance. Okay. Roll this out. We have some stickiness happening. Throw some flour down there and just roll that up. Got a little hole. Let's patch it up if we can. If we can, we can, and we did. All right. Now we're going to do these ones a little bit thicker and a little smaller so you guys can see the difference. All right, this one, almost. All right, this one has a bubble in it too. Let's check the sides. Oh, look at that. That's great. This one rested, so we can put the other one on. Great, great. Okay. Just another second there. And then our last piece, right? Let's do all the things right. So that's going to be flour on the surface. Get a little flour on there because it's a little sticky. Rolling it into a ball. And passing it off to the detectives. Blah, 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 blah. Getting it done. And I can feel that it's sticky. So I'm going to start thinking about that, that flour, that whole flour situation, right? Okay. 
So I put some flour on that sticky part. This one's done. I have a question for you. Questions? Um, that comes from me, not from any of the students. Um, I said that you could use cornstarch as an alternative. So nutritionally, you can use cornstarch instead of flour. Would it work with this recipe? Would it work with this recipe? Honestly, here's the truth, guys. I don't know. I don't know if it would work with this recipe. Because cornstarch, uh, I would use cornstarch on like something like wings to get it super crispy on the outside. So I'm not sure if it'll work in this recipe. But I think we, we have some time here, right, to check in with Faithful All Google to yeah. see to see what some other professionals think out there. I'm not, I don't think, I don't think it will work in this recipe. But I love, I love to learn. All right, I felt some stickiness. So I'm adding some more flour, dusting it really well. Remember, this one's gonna be a little, a little thicker, just so we can see the difference, right? A little smaller. Let's just go with that. Okay, I'm done with all of this dough stuff, right? So what does that mean, guys? Exactly, we clean as we go. Using that tool again, multi-purpose tool. Scraping up all the gunk, because we don't want our parents to be mad at us at the end of the day when we're done cooking. There's dough specks everywhere. Look how easy that came up. Okay, now, great browning on this side, browning on this side, we have the air pocket, and we go. All right, check this out. Nice. Browning, air pocket, good to go. This one was first, so it goes on first. And this is the thick one. These last two are going to be the thick one. We're going to see if there's a difference. Let that rock and roll. All right, we're going to clean this up. And while we're cleaning this up, guess what we're going to do next? We're going to bring back all our friends. We're going to bring back all our friends that we just that are in the fridge right now, right? We're gonna bring back the dips. We're gonna place them in these bowls. We're gonna get our plates ready to do the thing. Okay. All right, so this is gonna be our serving. What we're gonna be serving with. Here we are, making guest appearances, coming back, making it work. All right, give everything a nice little stir. Guys, you know, making sure our fridges are closed, we don't leave anything open, mix everything up a little bit. Things might have settled to the bottom. All right. Finishing up some of this dough. Oh yeah, almost, almost. In the meantime, in the meantime, we'll start plating, right? Oh, the colors, the colors. One. Putting everything in these cute little bowls. Some hummus. All right. Take these to the side. Let me just put on some pita. And then, just because we talked about it, some veggies, right? Super important. Guys, we did it. That was beautiful. Oh, this, this last piece looks to be done, though. All right, before we wrap it up, let's look at 
the big guys, the variations that we had. So we can see they're a little thicker, right? They grew up to be a little thicker. They're not as thin as this one on the sides, but it still has an air pocket and we can see it kind of rising. I hear that I hear the air inside there and it still has good color, but it's gonna be a little bit more dense, right? So it might be a better vessel than these guys are. While those are finishing up, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna taste everything together, right? We're gonna taste everything. We're gonna say our goodbyes now, right? Oh, guys, oh, before, oh my goodness. Look at this pocket. Oh, wait, maybe. Yeah, nice little pocket right here. Really, 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 really cool. That means we did something, we did something right. That's nice. So we're gonna try this out. <laughs> it's really good. Okay. Now to try the hummus. All right. Try the hummus. So a phrase we use after or while you're eating is sahtain, which means in good health. So sahtain, mm. chef Jamal. Mm. In good health. I already feel better. <laughs> I already feel a lot better. Okay, guys. With a full mouth and a full heart, thank you again for hanging out with us all summer. It's been a pleasure. We have a treat for you. Mm -hmm. Along with the food and the love and all of that. We have some knives. Uh, we have a cookbook. We have a lot of special tools coming your way to continue on your culinary journey, your journey of wealth, of health, and uh, sharing all of this knowledge. We have that coming out for you. Also, we'd like to thank Chef Jacobson, our whole production team, Feed the Mass, Portland Public School, and everyone at Fabian, Oregon State University, and Bob's Red Mill, Red, Bob's Red Mill excuse me, for the support of this program. None of this, as I continue to chew, none of this is possible without a great team, and that's what we had here today. I also want to thank our nutrition team, Shara and Maya. Uh, they, they added a lot of wonderful content and a lot of wonderful knowledge uh, to what we are doing here today. Remember to keep cooking, share your photos to us and feed the mass. And if you have any questions, we'll be in the chat for just a little bit longer. Um, I'm so happy that we got to do this with you guys. My name is Chef Jamal and thank you so much for a wonderful experience. Enjoy your food and have a great day.